chapter six, June. I pledge a lesson to the frog. Here is your picture. So we know it's Jackie Robinson because it's number 42. And we have, it looks like Mrs. Rappaport and all of the class. It was almost summer. An eager sun outshone the neon sign atop the squib factory even before the first bell beckoned students to their homerooms. Now, alongside the empty milk crates at Mr. P's, brown paper bags with collars neatly rolled boasted plump strawberries, crimson cherries, and chiquita bananas. The cloakroom stood empty, gone the sweaters, slickers, and galoshes. At the second bell, the fifth grade, as always, scrambled to their feet. As always, Tommy O'Brien giggled, and each girl checked her seat to see if she was his victim of the day. Susie Spencer, whose tardiness could set clocks, rushed in, her face long with excuses. Popping a last bubble, Maria Gonzalez tucked her gum safely behind an ear while Joseph gave an extra stroke to his hair. Finally, Mrs. Rappaport cleared her throat and the room was still. With hands over their hearts, the class performed the ritual that ushered in another day at school. Shirley's voice was lost in the chorus. I pledge a lesson to the frog of the United States of America and to the wee puppet for which it's witch's hands, one Asian in the vestibule with little tea and just rice for all. So that's Shirley's um, version of the Pledge of Allegiance because she doesn't understand all the words. Class, be seated, said Mrs. Rappaport, looking around to see if anyone was absent. No one was. Any questions on the homework? All hands remained on or below the desks, etched with initials, new with splinters, brown with age. In that case, any questions on any subject at all? Irvie's hand shot up. It was quickly pulled down by Maria, who hated even the sound of the word spider. Spiders were all Irvie ever asked about, talked about, dreamed about. How many eyes do spiders have? Do spiders eat three meals a day? Where are spiders' ears located? By now, everyone in the fifth grade knew that spiders come with no six or eight eyes, that spiders do not have to dine regularly and that some can thrive as long as two years without a bite, that spiders are earless. Since Irvie was as scared of girls as Maria was of spiders, he sat on his hands. But just in case he changed his mind, Maria's hand went up. Yes, Maria? Eh, I had a question, but I forgot. Was it something we discussed yesterday? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Something about air currents or cloud formation, perhaps? Yeah, how come I see lightning before I hear thunder? Does anyone recall the answer? Tommy jumped in. That's easy, because your eyes are in front and your ears are off to the side. To prove his point, he wiggled his ears, which framed his disarming smile like the handles of a fancy soup bowl. Laughter was his reward. The correct answer, Maria, said Mrs. Rappaport, trying not to smile too, is that light waves travel faster than sound waves. Shirley raised her hand. Yes. Who's the girl Jackie Robinson? Laughter returned. This time, Shirley did not understand the joke. Was the girl very, very bad? So bad that her name should not be uttered in the presence of a grown-up? Putting a finger to her lips, Mrs. Rappaport quieted the class. Shirley, you ask an excellent question, a most appropriate one. The Chinese blushed, wishing her teacher would stop praising her, or at least not in front of the others. Already they called her teacher's dog or apple shiner. So they're saying she's a teacher's pet. Jackie Robinson, Mrs. Rappaport continued, is a man, the first black to play baseball in the major leagues. What's a black, Mrs. Rappaport? Someone who is born with dark skin. Like Mabel? Like Mabel and Joey and Maria? No, Maria is not. But Maria is dark, darker than Joey. I see what you mean. Let me try again. They are some, an African American is someone whose ancestors originally came from Africa and who has dark skin. Then why am I called Jackie Robinson? Mrs. Rappaport looked mystified. Who calls you Jackie Robinson? Everybody. Then I'll have to ask them. Mabel? because she's pigeon-toed and stole home. The teacher nodded. Well, Shirley, it seems you are not only a good student, but a good baseball player. There, she'd done it again. The kids would surely call her a shiner of apple for teacher's dogs next. Shirley's unhappiness must have been obvious because Mrs. Rappaporty evidently felt the need to explain further. 
It's a compliment, Shirley. Jackie Robinson is a big hero, especially in Brooklyn, because he plays for the Dodgers. Who is Dodgers? Shirley asked. That question, like a wayward torch in a room full of firecrackers, sparked answers from everyone. The bums! The best in the history of baseball! Kings of Ebbets Field! They'll kill the Giants! They'll murder the Yankees! The swellest guys in the world! America's favorites! Winners! Mrs. Rappaport clapped her hands for order. The girls quieted down first, followed reluctantly by the boys. That's better. Participation is welcome, but one at a time. Let's do talk about baseball. Yay, shouted the class. And let's combine it with civics, too. The class did not welcome this proposal as eagerly, but Mrs. Rappaport went ahead anyway. Mabel, tell us why baseball is America's favorite pastime. Pursing her lips in disgust at so ridiculous a question, Mabel answered, because it's a great game. Everybody plays it, loves it, and follows the games on the radio and nabs every chance to go and see it. True, said Mrs. Rappaport, nodding, but what is it about baseball that is ideally suited to Americans? Mabel turned around looking for an answer from someone else, but to no avail. There was nothing to do but throw the question back. What do you mean by suits? I mean, is there something special about baseball that fits the special kind of people we are and the special kind of country America is? Mrs. Rappaport tilted her head to one side, inviting a response. When none came, she sighed a sigh so fraught with disappointment that it sounded as if her heart was breaking. No one wished to be a party to such a sad event, so everybody found some urgent business to attend to, like scratching, slumping, sniffing, scribbling, squinting, sucking teeth, or removing dirt from underneath a fingernail. Joseph cracked his knuckles. The ticking of the big clock became so loud that President Washington and President Lincoln, who occupied the space to either side of it, exchanged a look of displeasure. But within the frail, bird-like body of Mrs. Rappaport was the spirit of a dragon, capable of tackling the heavens and earth. With a quick toss of her red hair, she proceeded to answer her own question, with such feeling that no one who had heard, that no one who heard could be so unkind as to ever forget, least of all, surely. Baseball is not just another sport. America is not just another country. If Shirley did not understand every word, she took its meaning to heart. Unlike grandfather's stories, which quieted the warring spirits within her with the softness of moonlight or the lyric timber of a lone flute, Mrs. Rappaport's speech thrilled her like sunlight and trumpets. In our national pastime, each player is a member of a team, but when he comes to bat, he stands alone. One man, many opportunities, for no matter how far behind, how late in the game, he by himself can make a difference. He can change what he has what has been. He can make it a new ball game. In the life of our nation, each man is a citizen of the United States, but he has the right to pursue his own happiness. For no matter what his race, religion, or creed, be he pauper or president, he has the right to speak his mind, to live as he wishes within the law, to elect our officials and stand for office, to excel, to make a difference, to change what has been, to make a better America. And so can you, and so must you. Shirley felt as if the walls of the classroom had vanished. In their stead was a frontier of doors to which she held the key. This year, Jackie Robinson is at bat. He stands for himself, for Americans of every hue, for an America that honors fair play. Jackie Robinson is the grandson of a slave, the son of a sharecropper, raised in poverty by a lone mother who took in ironing and washing, but a woman determined to achieve a better life for her son, and she did, for despite hostility and injustice, Jackie Robinson went to college, excelled in all sports, served his country in war, and now Jackie Robinson is at bat in the big leagues. Jackie Robinson is making a difference. Jackie Robinson has changed what has been. And Jackie Robinson is making a better America. And so you can you and so must you. Suddenly, Shirley understood why her father had brought her 10,000 miles to live among strangers. Here, she did not have to wait for gray hairs to be considered wise. Here, she could speak up, question even the conduct of the president. Here, Shirley Temple Wong was somebody. She felt as if she had the power of ten tigers, as if she had grown as tall as the Statue of Liberty. And that's the end of chapter 6, June.